Hello, welcome to this uh, lecture video on non-parametric statistics. So before we generate tables for non-parametric statistics tests, we have also to um, just to have a recall of a parametric test compared with a non-parametric test. So why do we use non-parametric test? When do we use non-parametric test? So we know for sure in our discussion when I ask you to use parametric test is that we have a set of assumptions that needs to be considered before we can decide that this test is appropriate for your data. So which means whenever we are using parametric test, there is a tendency that we cannot satisfy the condition and that's the time that we are going to use non-parametric test. And then aside from that, it is strictly stated in the assumptions of parametric test that the data must be at least interval or ratio. So which also means that if the data is interval or ratio, but it does not satisfy the condition on normality, then it means that we cannot use a parametric test. Therefore, we will be using a parametric test. Now, what if our data is not interval? So like, like say, for instance, it's an ordinal data or it's a nominal data. So therefore, again, we cannot use parametric tests, but thanks God, we have what we call as non-parametric statistics that will still allow us to answer our inferential question. So just like with the questions in, uh, in a parametric test, like, questions on comparison, questions on relationships, questions on predictions. This can also be solved using a non-parametric test. But because the claim is that parametric test is more powerful than non-parametric test, the first choice that we are trying to do or to use is the parametric test. Now, going back to non-parametric test, so aside from saying that this can be used for ordinal data, nominal data, interval, or ratio, there is also, of course, some, uh, what you call this, characteristics that we need to consider. Just like if we are using this, it means that we can use the median as our location parameter. So remember that when we when we also use our parametric test, we are using mean and standard deviations. But for non-parametric, the appropriate is also median because if you can still recall the appropriate also measures of central tendency given the data. If our data is ordinal or if our data is at least interval but it is not normally distributed, the best or appropriate measures of central tendency is median. So it is just, of course, right to mention that when we use this, we are using a median as the location parameter. So it is it can be used whenever we have also skewed data or not normally distributed data, which means when we have two groups that will be compared, it is okay if the one group is, is twice or thrice um, larger than the other group. So it's not really a concern or an issue for a non-parametric test, even if it is not equal or it's not approximately equivalent. So we also, of course, mentioned that, that this is a weaker statistical power than a parametric statistic. Now, I have here a data on level of light satisfaction. So this is the data. So if you can still recall, this data is obtained in the questionnaire on light satisfaction as Seeing the respondents for the profile variables like age, sex, socioeconomic status, and at the same time also asking them to rate the items from um, originally it's one to one to 
seven. So still, this is still one to to seven. But instead of using the sum, which is the uh, what do you call this? It's the main. Um, it's it's used of course to to guide us in how to interpret the data. Uh, I replace it with with the mean. I just I replace it with the mean. So just to maybe have an idea about that, maybe we can go over with that questionnaire. So let us see. So if we can use that question. Let's go over our this. So let's have a look of that particular question. So this is the questionnaire that I am talk, uh, that I am um, uh, this one. So this is the questionnaire that I am mentioning. So we ask for age, for sex, for current relationship status, and socioeconomic status, and then for the life satisfaction, this are the items. So we have five items. And uh, originally, it is from Diner et al. So, but as mentioned, um, instead of using the sum, I considered using the mean. Or we can also use it anyway. Um, the guide is also being presented, like here. So let's just go over it. So if it's five to nine, it means it's extremely dissatisfied. If it's ten to fourteen, it is dissatisfied. Okay. Let's go back here. So let's just remove the mean and ls and consider the original question instead. So given this data, uh, our objective is to first answer or to get the sum by, of course, computing for the sum of items to one to item five. So the data here is age, sex, and socioeconomic status, and the responses in item one to five. That is uh, just compute for the sum. So you can do this using Microsoft Excel, or you can also do this here. So transform and compute the variable. And let's see. So let us uh, get the sum. And then compute for the sum here. So sum, open parenthesis, copy each item, item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4, and item of course, uh, here, what is this? so this is the output viewer. So it is where we can see the output. So let's go back. So of course, here, after generating the sum, so we have an additional variable, which is the sum. So just to check the number of respondents, so we have 100 respondents. But later, if we will be checking also for, let's say, for the variable view. So we have, of course, the scale, uh, the value one for male to for female, and socioeconomic status is um, one, very little, two, little, and three is the set. So let us uh, generate the number of respondents to analyze group according to the profile, descriptive frequency. So let's uh, just also get the profile. So uh, let's go back here. Let's uh, just classify for it the measure. So sex is a nominal data, such economic status is an ordinal data, and this are all ordinal data. So the individual items, though it's um 
it is uh, treated as a score, of course, it's still it's an ordinal data. But for the sum, this is K. So analyze descriptive frequency. So our objective is to just check the number of respondents when grouped according to the profile. So we transferred our variables and hit OK. So we have uh, several variables here, which means later we have to do something first with our data and then we have to group it. Because of course we are not we are not concerned of grouping our results for each of this uh, age. So we have uh, 50 male, 50 female, and then we have very little, little, or just. So if we will be using this data, if we will be using this data, uh, of course, we will do the preliminary analysis. And our data is at least interval or ratio, because it's numerical. But since it is normally distributed. So let's raise the possible problem. Is there a significant difference in the level of life satisfaction when grouped by? Um, let, let us not consider age because we have to do a grouping first to do that. So for the meantime, we will be answering if there are significant difference in the level of life satisfaction when grouped according to sex and when grouped according to socioeconomic status. And by looking at the initial data, so do you think it is possible or we can already conclude that the appropriate measure or the appropriate rather test that we can use here is a parametric and of course the answer is yes because by central limit theorem let me just wait. by central limit theorem our data is already at least 34 male, at least 34 female. And these are equivalent. So by central limit theorem, our data is normal. So we will be using parametric test. And then for the second one, so it's similarly 30, 30, it's oh, at least 34 each. Then again, by central limit theorem, this is normally distributed. And it means that we will be using parametric test. But of course, this is not our objective for this video. Our objective is to use non parametric test. So, which means how will we uh, use non-parametric test in this problem? So we know, of course, that the more uh, powerful is the parametric compared with non -parametric. We know that the level of satisfaction generally is an ordinary data. So if I will be using not the scores, not the sum, but the ordinal data, then even if the data shows that it satisfies the condition of central limit work, we cannot use a parametric test if our data is ordinary. So assuming that our data is not, um, we cannot, of course, uh, we will not be using, rather, we will not be using each sum, but rather we will be using the ordinal data. So going back to our data, let us just clear our
Okay. So going back here, so let's uh, just uh, change the problem. Is there a significant difference in the level of satisfaction in item one, for example, when grouped by sex or age? So assuming that this is now the problem. So of course, item one is an ordinal data. Or if not, we can also get what is the level of life satisfaction generally not using the sum. And how will we do that? Because of course, item one is ordinal until item five is also ordinal. So how will we determine if our data now satisfies or is can be can be solved rather using a non-parameter? So let us do a transformation. So we will be, uh, let's go back to our data, uh, to our questionnaire rather. Yes. So we are going to classify the mean or rather the sum. Like for example, if it is 14, so let's uh, check in our list. So 14 means this satisfied. So we are going to use the ordinal data. So let's do it. So transform. So we are going to use the function of SPSS, which is the transformation. We usually use this when we are doing descriptive statistics. And of course, we can also do it manually, just as uh, uh, I have mentioned. You can classify this into, or you can use a coding Team. Like for example, here five to nine. So five is extremely dissatisfied. So I place one here, and then satisfied. This is also dissatisfied. Nine is also extremely dissatisfied. Eleven is dissatisfied. So it's equal to two. You can actually do a sorting. So let's just sort this first. Okay, so that it's very easy for us to place one for all numbers that is within five to nine. And then let's give two for 10 to 14. And when we reach 15, let's uh, give it a value of uh, three because of course this means that it's already slightly this satisfied until 19. Okay, when we reach 20, it's neutral. And let's move here. But if it reach 21, so we do not have neutral, we do not have 20. But if it if we reach 21 until 25, it is slightly satisfied. So it's Four for neutral, five for slightly satisfied. So let's use five until two, uh, until twenty five. Uh, twenty seven. So the six, the starting twenty six. Let's play six until thirty. When we reach thirty one to thirty five, it means that it is extremely. Okay. So we are already done placing our variable left. And what is this level? So let's place it in the value. One means extremely satisfied. Uh, I mean dissatisfied. Two is this satisfied, three is slightly satisfied, four is neutral, but we do not have four, five is slightly satisfied, and six is satisfied, seven is extremely and click OK. So this is now our 
data. So going back to our problem, is there a significant difference in the level of satisfaction when group one? Yes. If just in case we do not have, if just in case we do not really have the data on some and what is accessible to us is the data only for level of satisfaction, the ordinal data, then it means that we cannot use a parametric test. We cannot consider parametric test. Instead, we can use now the non-parametric test. So how to generate the table that will answer this? So the, ta the test that is used to answer this, so this is a comparison of for letter A, it's a comparison of ordinal data grouped by two categories. So we will be using man with me with it. So for the other one, it's a comparison, socioeconomic history, a comparison of ordinal data when grouped by three categories. We will be using crucial white. And in case that the result, in case that the result is significant, we will be using pairwise comparison. If result is significant. So just like ANOVA, we use Bonferroni or Shippe or Postbox comparison. So we are now ready to answer letter A. So the table that we'll be presenting is the significant difference in the level of life satisfaction when grouped by six. Let's just copy this. When grouped by social economic status. So how to generate the table? Let's move here. Analyze. So let's locate non-parametric test and legacy dialogue. And of course, male and females are independent. So we will be going to independent sample. Let's transfer our level as test variable. So this must be an ordinal. So we failed to change. And when group according to set. So we will be defining this one, two, continue. So look at this. So we actually have other more tests aside from Man Whitney Newton. So we have Moses Extreme. Almogorov Smirnov, Wolfowitz, and others. Of course, we will be using man with me. Then click OK. So this is now the result that we need. So when interpreting this table, it is uh, just similar with how we... So let's uh, just uh, get the... Uh, Okay. So can we or maybe let's just get it as a picture.
and if we will be presenting this we just need to present sex and mean rank sum of ranks and it's okay not to present the result of both of them so we can just proceed to man with me so let me just show it here so if you will be presenting this so what will be the table so sex, male, female, and then N. Uh, it's your option if you also would like to present the median instead of the mean rank. But anyway, if we use the mean rank, it also means the same thing. So the higher mean rank means the higher mean and lower mean rank the lower the value of satisfaction so the symbol for test is statistics is u because this is man with me you test u is one two three four point five and p is equal to zero point nine one three so you can just copy the value here or this is all you can also use the so using this, of course, it, it can be said that the satisfaction of female is higher than the satisfaction of male because it has higher minimum. However, the result of U test, man with me, U test, reveals that the result is not significant. So the level of satisfaction of male and female are the same regardless. Or rather, the level of satisfaction of the respondents are the same regardless of their sex. So that is what it means. Now, moving to the next example. So since socioeconomic status is grouped according into three, then it means also that we cannot use man with the U test. Therefore, what we will be using is crystal Y. So analyze. Non parametric test, legacy dialogue, K independent sample. So we will be um, placing the level as mentioned because we are using the ordinal data for the, we, we, we are using non parametric. Test. And social economic status. So the number here minimum is one, maximum. Okay. So the result is also not significant. Here is the result. So what if what if let's say that the result is significant? So where can we find where can we find the, the pairwise compile? So in case that the, or maybe we can just edit our table and uh, try to um, to work also on samples that shows a significant result. So maybe in a separate video, we will be presenting another example of a crystal wallet, generating crystal wallet that will show a significant result. Okay, let's just go back here. So it also means that the highest are those who belong to very little socioeconomic status, followed by just enough, and the lowest is little. However, again, the result of crystal Wallis test, the symbol for crystal Wallis test is just the same with the chi square. So it's Chi square one one seven degree of freedom two asymptotic significance is point 
9.43. So, how is this written? So, chi square 2 is equal to 117. T is equal to 0.943. This is not significant. So, the level of satisfaction of the respondent, again, or the same regardless of their socioeconomic status. So this ends the video. Thank you for watching.